Okay, so we move on to the next James Bond review. This is the review of The World Is Not Enough, Pierce Brosnan's third outing as 007, and uh, the 19th James Bond film. So, you know, you're 19 films into a mammoth series. The series, at this point, um, had been running for 37 years, and... Um, you know, how much, how many more situations can you think of as writers for, um, for Bond to find himself in? It's, um, you know, it's an un it's unenviable task. I, you know, I wouldn't want the task of writing a James Bond film, certainly not. I'd love a task of directing one, but not to write one. Um, and, um, of course, so we come to Pierce Brosnan's third James Bond film. This is uh, my review of The World Is Not Enough. Now, um, I'm going to try and be more concise in this review, take it sort of down to about 10 minutes, So, because I've realised that my last couple of rev reviews have been a little wishy-washy, and um, I need to be a, little, be a little bit more succinct with my opinions, so that's what I'm going to try and do with this review. One thing I is criminal that I haven't mentioned so far, actually, is um, the fact that... Um, Albert R. Broccoli, Kirby Broccoli, uh, passed away in 1996 um, in between Goldeneye and the release of Tomorrow Never Dies. So Tomorrow Never Dies was the first film for um, his daughter Barbara Broccoli and his stepson Michael Wilson as, uh, as producers of the series. Um, and, you know... Cubby Broccoli left the series in capable hands. I think they did they did a great job um, carrying on the Bond formula, and they have done uh, over the last uh, fifteen years since uh, since Cubby's death. And um, it's very nice how D Tomorrow Never Dies is actually uh, dedicated to the memory of Cubby Broccoli as well. It's very nicely very nicely done. Um, so they will. They continue with the world is not enough. It was Barbara Broccoli's idea t uh, for the story, and uh, Neil Purvis and um, and uh, Robert Wade were uh, hired to write the story for uh, the world is not enough. Two new writers for the James Bond series at the time. So um, this this story actually, if we go right back to the beginning, we have the traditional gun barrel sequence. And we have a pre-title sequence, which is the longest to date in the series. It is still the longest. It runs for about 13 minutes. Uh, at one point you kind of think, when when are the opening titles? When is the title going to come up? Uh, because it's um, it's such a long pre-title sequence, but it's great and it's it's essential for all of, for the whole, for the precursor to the story. It's a, it's a nice mini adventure at the beginning. So Bond in the banker's office in Spain and then um, the attempted assassination of Bond in the banker's office by um, by uh, the vi one of the villain's henchwomen, and um, Bond escaping from the bank, and then we retreat back to London. Uh, MI6 is attacked, and um, Bond uh, pursues the cigar girl from the Spanish banker's office to. Um, uh, down the River Thames, uh, great chase. It's, the whole pre-title sequence is used in a lots of um, media studies classes. I remember being um, back at school and we had to analyse the sequence for media studies. It's um, uh, it's a great opening sequence. Um, actually, all of the Pierce Brosnan opening sequences are terrific, in my opinion. They're some of the best in the series. Um, it's just a shame that the films kind of go a little downhill after that. And uh, the same, unfortunately, can be said for The World Is Not Enough. It's not a bad film. People, um, I've been reading reviews recently uh, where some people have said that The World Is Not Enough is the worst Pierce Brosnan film. I disagree totally with this. Um, the World Is Not Enough has a little place in my heart because um, it's the first James Bond film that I went to see at the cinema and as an impressionable 12 year old going to the cinema to see the film, as soon as that gun barrel came on, I'd only sort of been introduced to Bond about six months beforehand. It was, um, you know, it was a dream come true just sitting there watching the film. I was totally engrossed as, um, as a preteen. Um, and the film is just, the film is, it's a really good one. It's a really good, um, it's a really good adventure, and it is a more down-to-earth James Bond film as well. I think um, after Tomorrow Never Dies, Pierce Brosnan wanted personally to um, create a film that shows Bond in a little more jeopardy. Certainly, Tomorrow Never Dies, he towards in the second half of the film, he come, becomes sort of um, 
a real action man and a kind of um, you know unstoppable unstoppable man who can do absolutely everything but I think Brosnan wanted to bring the fallibility back into James Bond's character that was so evident in uh, like the Timothy Dalton films for example and in places in Goldeneye as well where you see um, a quieter side to Bond so um, in that respect Pierce Brosnan actually gives a terrific performance as James Bond in this film it's actually probably his strongest in the series um, and he has a great supporting cast uh, lined up with him as well. Uh, Renard is played by uh, Robert Carlyle, fresh from the full Monty, one of the biggest faces in the late 90s in cinema. And um, he's, actually, he's actually a very good villain in this film. Um, he antagonises Bond very well. Obviously, we find out later that um, the central villain of the piece is, um, is uh, Sophie Marceau's Electra King, who um, has... Uh, set up the whole the whole narrative basically and she has tricked Bond and she's even tricked Renard so um it's quite a nice little twist actually the thing that's the thing that people um get confused with where the world is not enough and I do to some extent is um is what is the film which we have to question what is the film trying to be and sometimes sometimes it's um uh, very funny, very humorous. Sometimes it um, borrows a lot of conventions from the films up to that point. Um, so sometimes it's bang, 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 lots of action everywhere, lots of running around. Um, and other times it's trying to be very solemn and it's almost trying to be like a um, a revenge story. It's a lecture trying to get revenge over her father. So she kills, she sets up um, the plot to kill her father. Um, and um, to regain power for her family, for her family's legacy. Um, so, in a lot of ways, there are some very downbeat moments in The World Is Not Enough, and the quieter moments are uh, the standout moments in the film. Um, we have Denise Richards, who plays Dr Christmas Jones, one of the most unrealistic doctors in a film that you could possibly imagine. It's about as unrealistic as Holly Goodhead in um, Moonraker, but even more so in this. She is she is a bimbo and um, it's a bit of a nonsense character really to be honest, but it does f forward the plot along and um, she's easy on the eye I suppose, so um, can't complain too much. Uh, um, uh, what else can we say about The World Is Not Enough? Valentin Sukovsky, Robbie Coltrane, returns prior to his work on the Harry Potter series. Um, and the character does um, have a does come to an end at the end of um, The World Is Not Enough as well, which is a shame, really. It would have been... I think he would have brought a little more gravitas to uh, the following film, Die Another Day, if they'd kept his character alive for just a little longer. But obviously his character's death serves a purpose. He actually helps Bond, even though it doesn't look like he is, at um, at uh, the climax of the film. So um, you do see a more human side to Bond in The World Is Not Enough, which is something that I particularly like. David Arnold's score is uh, it's another strong one as well. There's some brilliant action cues. The Thames Boat Chase um, is a great action uh, action music cue for the film. And um, generally it's just a fairly, it's a fairly strong film. And it's, Far from the worst of the James Bond films, definitely. I mean, it's um, it's a good film in my opinion. I I always enjoy watching it. Again, it has the watchability factor that so that many of the Pierce Brosnan films have. So um, it's um, it's another it's another good Pierce Brosnan film in my opinion. So um, I'm gonna leave that there. I think um, that's that's those are the main points that I want to say about uh, about the world is not enough. Um. So, the film was released in November 1999, had a big premiere um, in November, and um, of course we will now be taking James Bond into the 21st, um, into the 21st century with, um, with a new director, with Lee Tamahori, and the 20th James Bond film. So it was all building up to the next film's release. And there was a two year gap between Goldeneye and Tomorrow Never Dies and The World Is Not Enough. Um, so we had a three year gap between The World Is Not Enough's premiere and the premiere of Die Another Day. And there was a reason for that. They wanted to make Die Another Day the 20th film in the series. They wanted it to be on the 40th anniversary of the James Bond series, which is fair enough. So um, in a post 9-11 world in the 21st century, we see um, 
we see Bond in real jeopardy at the start of Die Another Day. So, James Bond will return, Pierce Brosnan will return in his fourth and final outing as James Bond in, in Die Another Day.